All right, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Stanislav Lasnička. I work as a principal software engineer in Red Hat, at least for another two weeks or so. And today I will be talking about uh, how I was handling, uh, how I handled uh, sessions in uh, in the OpenShift web console in the world where you bring your own identity provider and OIDC provider. Uh, so. Bring your, own bring your own identity. What does that mean in terms of OpenShift? Uh, if you're familiar with OpenShift at least a little bit, you probably know that there is something called the web console uh, where you can interact with the cluster somehow. And if you want to authenticate yourself, uh, you the, the web console usually talks with, uh, well, <laughs> if you want to authenticate, there's no other way around it, but to talk to the uh, OAuth internal OAuth server, right? And this, this is how the world has been for quite a long time. The OAuth server is always there. It uh, serves as kind of a middleman uh, to authentication providers. Uh, it allows you to configure pretty much you know, any uh, authentication provider that you may think of. Sometimes it, this would be harder. This would be, sometimes this would be easier, uh, you know, depending on which protocol you choose to use for your, uh, for your authentication. And so this is this is what the world has been, right? Uh, notice, you know, in the in the console we're using L7 load balancer. That's actually pretty useful uh, for things like uh, you know sticky sessions. It hasn't been useful up until now so much, but it, it, it's it, it's going to be much more useful after uh, <laughs> after we're done with this talk. Uh, and also notice that there's an L4 load balancer for the OAuth OpenShift that. You know that's useful if you need things like uh, MTLS and things in order to be able to serve those generic uh, uh, generic authentication providers. Now, so this is this is the state that we've got today, right? This is what we have, and what does the bring your own uh, identity provider mean for console? Well, it means that uh, we no longer want any of this cool and fancy old OpenShift uh, OAuth server, but we want the console to be talking directly to an OIDC provider, right? And so all the things that it, it was doing, like the OAuth flows that it was doing uh, to the old uh, OAuth server, it will now do with the, well, whatever OIDC provider that you bring. And the OIDC provider, of course, can live outside the cluster, inside the cluster, doesn't matter. Um, right. Uh, if you're f at least a little familiar with OpenShift, or maybe a little bit more familiar, you would know that the core uh, the con core applications that run on your uh, fresh uh, OpenShift installation, those are like all of the applications are managed each by its own uh, operator, right? And this is this is like the only slide where we will talk about it, but this is, is good to bear in mind. And so, uh, you know, uh, in order to implement bring your own identity. Uh, we needed to amend the operator as well a little bit. Previously, you know, with the nicely integrated uh, OpenShift OAuth server, the only thing that the operator had to know was, well, uh, how does the, how is the console supposed to trust the OAuth server? With the external OIDC provider, there is quite a few other uh, things that you need to supply the uh, the web console with. Uh, we created a special API for that. This is just you know this is just just for il illustration for uh, whoever would be interested. You can see that uh, there's there, there's all those things like the uh, like the issu issuer. This is going to be always uh, important, right? And, uh, and uh, you also want the console to have some kind of OIDC client. Da -di da 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 da. Uh, nice things. Uh, I originally was uh, presenting this talk to the uh, to the console team internally, uh, and so this slide is mainly for them. But I uh, thought that I would keep it just in case, you know, there were some developers among you who would like to see some anti patterns. Uh, the console is actually unfortunately full of it. It's it's uh, it's, it's a seven years old binary, and uh, so you know uh, I only had a very limited time of changing it, and uh, I had to tackle all, all kinds of other problems. So, like if you're interested, uh, I, I added a bunch of links here to the to the slide. Uh, slides will be uh, available to you, I think, right after this presentation. I already upload, uh, uploaded them. Now you can click through them, and see if like you this is anything that would interest you. Anyway, from the generic problems, let's look at 
the problem space that we are actually trying to solve, and that is the connection of the console to an actual OIDC provider, right? So the things that we know that we will need uh, is, you know, we, we have all the configuration to the console, and we know that how, how to connect to the OIDC provider. And uh, OIDC defines some kind of uh, like discovery protocol, which lets you uh, figure out like what features are there available for on the OIDC provider. Where, where should I uh, where should I query the OIDC provider if I want to get a token? So all of this information we uh, we decided that we would cache because in OpenShift we you know we were trying to be as dynamic as as. Uh, we can uh, as, as in a binary, and so like the 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 console uh, is just uh, regularly querying the for for the OIDC info. Another thing that we will uh, have to be handling is we want the sessions uh, on the console to be uh, to be available somehow to through to all of the instances of the console. If if you remember the first slide that I showed you, um, you would know that there are. By default, two pods, right? And you want uh, you you want your session to be also available. If you're on one pod, you will probably get a sticky session and talk into that one pod, right? But what happens if if, if uh, the traffic is routed to the second pod? So like you you don't want the user to be dealing with that. Uh, we want the sessions to be uh, refreshing, right? If 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 there's an expiring token. You don't want no, uh, oh, uh, your token expired. Uh, let's redirect you back to the SSO, uh, get your new token, and, and so on. No, no, you want that all to happen in the background, right? Because there's like nothing worse than when you have your full, I don't know, uh, 50, 70, 120 lines uh, YAML, you know, uh, put on. A put put in a page, and then suddenly the page refreshes. So all of your data is lost, and then you're running around and uh, screaming at to whoever the developer might have been, which was, would have been me in this case. And uh, also, well, we needed to figure out how to do the uh, logout right from the console, because once again, it would be very annoying if you clicked a logout button and the console would be oh, okay. You're now logged out. I'm, I'm uh, and uh, I'm now going back to my original page. The original page re redirects you to the SSO, and then uh, because you already have, because you still have uh, a session with the SSO, now you're logged back into the console because you had a session at the SSO. And it just gave me new token. So like these were the things that uh, I uh, wanted to solve. Uh, Turns out that some of the problems were actually quite easy to solve, right? Like cache, caching the OIDC discovery, you just create an async cache. Oh, you, you use uh, Go generics and da -da -da -da. That's, that's really easy. Uh, the SSO logout, uh, OIDC has a nice specification for front channel logout, which is what we are using here. Easy business, you just you know, redirect the user uh, to a specific endpoint at the OIDC provider and you're done with it. But the whole, the the, the grow of the uh, of the whole effort, uh, where from from the start it was obvious that it's going to be the session handling, right? And so for the session handling, I uh, set myself a few goals. Uh, first of them was I want the access tokens uh, or the tokens that are used for access in uh, the sessions. To be, I want to be able to refresh them. Uh, I want that to be seamless, right? I, l l like I mentioned, I don't want when 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 a token is expiring. I do not want uh, to be redirected back to to the SSO, get a new token. No, no, I want this to happen in the background, and we've got good means for that, right? Uh, OAuth uh, knows how to do this, uh, but it wasn't uh, wasn't the case in the console previously. I want to refrain from any uh, refresh token reuse because that's generally viewed as a malpractice in OIDC, right? I, I don't want my refresh token to be reused by several uh, other other requests, and then just you know some 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 IDMs uh, IDPs can even ban to refresh token reuse. So I, I want to refrain from that. Why that may sound obvious uh, and why it isn't as much is when you go to the web console page, 
what actually happens is, uh, the, is a sing single page application, right? And so uh, the backend is bombarded with, uh, with many, many requests, like 30 requests or so. And so, you know, if, if there's 30 requests uh, coming to you with, with the same one refresh token, and, and you, you, you know that you need to refresh the session, like you only want to do that once. So that, that's something that I, um, that, that I set up as a goal for myself. And yeah, okay, this is the recording and so on. <laughs> um, and another thing that I uh, wanted to make sure happens is a seamless session handover, right? If for any reason you are redirected from, uh, you know, your, your traffic is redirected from one instance to another, you don't want the user to notice. You just want the user to have a seamless experience, right? You don't want no, no uh, page reloads. You just want them to be, to be able to uh, carry on with whatever they are doing in the console. Right, and that could be like in the case that uh, one, one of one of the uh, instances in the backend uh, I just removed, and then like that, that's the that's probably the most probable case of where the session handover would happen. So, with all that in mind, uh, I set out for that, right? And uh, if you've ever uh, dealt with this kind of problem, you'll probably know uh, that. Uh, you cannot just store ID tokens in cookies, right? And so why that is, ID tokens can be pretty long if they want it. Sometimes it's just, 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 just the groups, they, they take a lot, of, a lot of space, right? And so one of the things that I knew from the very start is that I will have to deal with the problem of not being able to store everything at a client, but I, I will have to use some combination of a client side and server side caching. And so on the client side, obviously, uh, I'm using cookies. On the server side, I implemented some, some locked cache where um, I'm basically uh, getting a session token from the client, and then that's, that's an index to my, uh, to my server side cache. So uh, precisely uh, on the client side, we are using session and refresh tokens, which, which are being stored right in cookies. Uh, the session token is you know, just some random UID, uh, and it's an index to a server side cache, right? So when 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 the server receives the token, uh, the session token, it knows that it should look somewhere inside of the cache and, and try try to uh, get a session that way. Uh, don't forget that we are uh, in multi-instance sessions, right? So that means that every instance should know. Uh, which cookie values to look for. And for uh, that reason, I decided to distinguish these two by using a pod name for the uh, cookie name suffix. Currently, the, these cookies last uh, for a month. Uh, I think that the console team may look into, uh, into the expiration a little bit better, but this, 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 the, the, the month long expiration is necessary for you to be able to uh, you know, so, so that your uh, cache doesn't overflow with, with, with cookies in case there, there are several restarts of, uh, of the console in, uh, in, in a certain period of time. So like, this avoids that. And uh, this may seem obvious, but uh, it wasn't the case uh, always in uh, the console, but these new cookies will be encrypted and signed. So uh, yay. All right, on the server side, uh, this is, a uh, little bit more interesting, I'd like to think. Uh, you can see that we've got uh, this, uh, th th this, this cache, uh, which maps the session tokens that we get from the client into an actual session. A session is some combination of an ID, to ID token. ID to just so you know, ID tokens are generally used in Kubernetes of as, 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 as an access tokens to, uh, to resources for whatever, re for, for, for historical and well, some other good reasons, like you can always validate an ID token if uh, if it's signed. Uh, the session also stores refresh tokens, some expirations, all that, right? So, so we've got this map in here. Uh, so this, to some degree, this was already implemented before. Uh, so I, I just reuse that. Uh, we've got uh, an array of of, of these sessions uh, ordered in uh, an expiry like in, in, in expiration uh, expiration time, right? So that uh, at any time I can just uh, come and say, okay, uh, I want to clean up my cache a little bit. So I'll use bi uh, I will use binary search on this slice. I will find 
the first uh, the first member which is expiring, and then I will just remove all of the sessions uh, from from that point to to the right. So th this this is more for pruning purposes. And I also added uh, a refresh token cache. Uh, you'll understand uh, soon why I hope. <laughs> uh, right. And so, so like this is this is this is what basically the, the server side storage looks like. This is its interface. So you can see like this is quite obvious, right? Right. I'm, I want to add a session. I'm using an ID token uh, when I when I want to retrieve sessions. I'm using the session token. Obviously, if the session token fails. Uh, refresh token will be used, and there are some delete methods, right? So this is just a repeat. You know, we retrieve the uh, the, the sessions by uh, session and the refresh tokens. Um, we do the automatic pruning, as I mentioned earlier, on on the expiration uh, array, and well, and and this last uh, last thing it will be uh, explained in uh, in the following slide a little bit more thoroughly. But uh, so we index the refresh tokens by a previous refresh tokens. Uh, it sounds a little weird, but for now, <laughs> trust me that you know when uh, you get a session token and a refresh to and, and a previous refresh token from uh, the client side, and this is and this is an actual hit. Uh, that means that a session was already started by a, another instance. Probably is not in your uh, in your cache, and it also means that this is the second or later request here, right? So, uh, all right. So this is the, 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 the this is this is like the the the, the funniest uh, bit that that actually happens in here. I will explain it uh, piece by piece. But uh, this is this is like the most complex scenario that you can imagine uh, in this world, right? So uh, this is what happens roughly uh, when you are refreshing the token. And that's either in the case where you know, you're starting a new local session or uh, a session is expiring and you want to refresh that, right? But the, 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 this, this very case actually is, is, the, is the new local cache. And so this is what I actually mentioned earlier, right? At, uh, at the start, when, when, when you come to the web console page, you are hit with many requests, right? It's, uh, uh, they're, they're usually, I, th I think they're usually around, uh, around like 30 requests, 20 to 30 requests, right? And so, uh, I just marked that as request one for the first request and request two for the remaining 28 requests or 29. Uh, so these are these are all happening more or less in parallel, uh, and they both will come, you know, with the old refresh token, and they can can come with a session token, e either an old session token or uh, or an empty session token. Uh, so when that happens, uh, you know, the console gets that it. The console is trying to get a session from the cache. As you can see, we're using uh, the session token and the refresh token. And in uh, the case where this is a new instance, uh, this will be misses, right? And so you get a first miss here, uh, returns a um, nil session, uh, and and uh, and of course this is the same in, for for the for the sec second request. So the console sees. All right, I probably don't have a session for this user. All right, well, what, what do I do with that? So at that point, uh, the console will uh, create a uh, a refresh lock, basically a mutex, which is indexed by by the refresh token, and it will uh, it will try to once again do a get on the session, just in case you know somebody somebody created the session in the meantime. And uh, it sees that, you know, once again, it sees, well, there is no session, right? So what do I do now? Well, uh, I'm going to try to do the refresh token grant, which is very standard for OIDC. Uh, and so it contacts uh, the uh, identity provider. The identity provider gives it an ID token and it gives it a new refresh token, right? The cache knows, okay, oh uh, well, I got a new new cache here, a uh, new session here, uh, and so I'm going to create one, right? And then once I've got it, uh, I will return it back to the console so that the console can then, you know, respond to the browser. I know who you are. Uh, 
this is this is, this is your new so new session please use that right so you get a new new session index and then you for, for any or for any, any succeeding request you will be using just that and then you know because the second request also existed uh the second request does, does does the same right it's it's using the refresh token that that it came with originally right uh so that because that that's what we got in the cookie right and so so it tries to do to get just the same as we did here in this case and this time uh the cache actually knows oh wait uh all right, I, I, created, uh, I created an index for the refresh token here. I do not know the session because either there was none or there, there, there was some, uh, some session from a previous instance. And yeah, uh, I know that you, know, you are getting a session uh, number one with the refresh token number two. Uh, please uh, store that in your, uh, in your cookies and you're done. All right, so this is, this is uh, probably the most complex part. All, all the others are quite simple, right? Oh, uh, I'm not authenticated. Okay, well, uh, get 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 me a code. Or I'll, I'll talk to the IDP store store, store session. Those, those those are easy, but but the refresh uh, refresh sessions, particularly the ones when you are you you are starting a new uh, local session, those those are pretty hard. This may seem this this may seem a little bit complicated, but it works surprisingly good, uh, right? And so uh, now for the things that the user can see. Uh, previously, uh, when you logged into a console, you would see that you get uh, some kind of a uh, session cookie, uh, which is called open session token, and here, you know, this 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 in particular is the uh, open shift provider, right? And so, uh, the thing, the value in here is actually an unencrypt unencrypted access token. So, not great, but uh, that's what we uh, used to have and still have for for the open, open integrated open shift provider. Now, with the new system. Uh, you can see that we are actually storing the refresh token. Uh, that's the ones in here. And you can see that we've got some session cookies. In this case, uh, in, in this particular case, I actually removed the old instance so that uh, I can show you know, that two, uh, two different session, uh, cookie, uh, session tokens will be created. And like, as you can probably guess, like, this, is, this, is, this is some kind of an encoding of and uh, encrypted and uh, signed session, right? And these are, of course, like they they have uh, they have a certain size, which is not going to change. All right, uh, and you know it's as simple as that. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, that's everything from me. Uh, I wonder whether you have any questions about this. This feature is available currently in Hypershift 4.15. I would advise using 4.6. Oh, so, uh, sorry. Oh, the question from the crowd was, uh, is this feature already available? All right. And the answer to that question is, uh, this feature is available in Hypershift. It's not uh, currently uh, available in OpenShift standalone, even though we are working on that. It's uh, available in Hypershift 4.15. But if you had a chance, I would probably wait for Hypershift 4.16 because I did a couple of other fixes which are slowly making it to the 4.15, but uh, yeah, nothing worth the wait. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions by any chance? I see one question from, from that uh, Adaman young there. <laughs> Uh, the question is, does the OIDC discovery uh, info publish the uh, logout endpoint? And uh, the answer to that is, yes, it does. Uh, it, it does it for the front channel logout, and I believe that uh, it does it for the back channel logout as well, in case those are available and this feature is implemented in the OIDC provider. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Any questions at all? Ah, uh, there's. Uh, the feature does work with command line. Uh, that young man right there uh, was the one uh, who implemented it. That young man right here uh, uh, is the one who reviewed it. Um, yep.
Well, I like to think of myself as young. Uh, any other questions? Keep it coming. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, looks like everything else was clear. Uh, I thank you very much for your attention. And uh, if you've got any other questions uh, that you would like to ask me in private, <laughs> uh, please feel free to. I'm a little.